Vetco is the only chemical manufacturer to ferment our own beneficial bacteria to produce targeted probiotic cleaning solutions. We carefully select strains based on their efficacy against specific soils. Our proprietary nutrient packages boost probiotic growth for better results faster and are proven to continue working for 21 days post application. Unlike other manufacturers who purchase generalized bacteria strains and use them in every product, we are able to highly specialize our solutions for superior performance. In other words, we grow it so we know it. Hello, my name is Jeff Iverson and I'm in charge of sales operations and training here at Petco. And today we're fortunate enough to have Barry Rosenthal with us to demystify our topic of the day, probiotics. Barry has been with Betco for over 25 years, has held many positions, and is currently our senior product manager for general chemicals, which includes probiotics. Welcome, Barry. As we run through the presentation today, if you would like to ask a question, please click on the Q&A icon, the button there, and enter in your question, and we'll get to as many questions as, as we can towards the end of the presentation today. So speaking of questions, I have one for all of you that are on the webinar today. When we mention the word probiotic, what comes to your mind first? Click on the Q&A button and enter your answer. So when we mention the word probiotic, what comes to your mind first? Anybody? Yogurt, push, good bacteria, bacteria. Bathroom breaks. <laughs> We're getting some good answers there. Enzymes, kombucha. <laughs> so we got some very good answers on that today. And we'll be going through some of your answers. And first of all, let's, let's review today's agenda. And as I mentioned, we're fortunate enough to have Barry here today. All right, the agenda. First of all, we're gonna talk about what are probiotics, how probiotic cleaners work, the benefits of probiotic cleaning, the applications for probiotics, and then we'll answer all your questions. So with that, I'm gonna turn it over to Barry. Let's get started. Hello, everybody, and happy Friday. Um, yeah, so what? So I saw some good, good uh, answers there. You mentioned I saw yogurt, I saw enzymes, and uh, I saw one of our products push on there, and um, that's great because this is this leads into our uh, into our topic. Basically, um, probiotics. Probiotics are uh, beneficial bacteria, and they can be beneficial in your stomach. They mentioned yogurt. If people, a lot of people eat that to have, to aid, eat the you eat the yogurt to aid in digestion. Um, they are in soil and water. Basically, they're all over the world. They've been here a lot longer than than we have, and they'll be there a lot longer when when we're all gone. So they are pretty much everywhere. And there's all different types of bacteria. There's uh, non-pathogenic bacteria that do not cause illness. And there's the bacteria that do. We got stat, you know, staph, salmonella. When you have a bacterial infection, it's caused by the bad bacteria. But the bacteria we're gonna talk about, the probio probiotics are um, specific uh, specialized bacteria to target specific soils in the cleaning industry. And I think, that we have another poll question. We have a poll question for you here. Yeah, poll question number one, all bacteria cause illness. True or false? Please answer the question. All right, so 43 of 44 of you said false. So there's one true. So Barry, what is the correct answer? The correct answer is false. As we, uh, as kind of alluded to earlier, the um, probiotics do not cause illness. They specifically um, aid in um, cleaning and bacterial uh, and uh, help the overall uh, process. So these are the non-pathogenic bacteria that do not, do not cause illness. And 
we have a short video we'd like you to watch that kind of explains how these probiotics work. Enzymes break down complex waste particles into smaller pieces to prepare them for bacteria to digest. In biological remediation, non-pathogenic bacteria are chosen based on the types of enzymes they produce and are purposefully introduced in a given location in order to remove specific harmful waste and continue working until there is no more waste. All right, time for one more question. Question number two, enzymes use fats, oils, and greases as a food source, true or false? Enzymes use fats, oils, and greases as a food source. Still have a few people to uh, answer. All right, we'll go ahead and end the poll and share the results. So oh, we have uh, 32 people said true and seven people said false. And the answer is false. It kind of threw a little curveball at you. The, uh, the, the real answer is bacteria use the fats, oils, and greases. Um, the, back to the enzymes do not. The bacteria produce the enzymes. So a little different type of, type of mechanism. The bacteria produce the enzymes in order to digest the soil. So didn't want to make them all easy. So that was a little, little curveball for you. So basically what happens is the probiotics um, produce the enzymes to digest specific soils and they need these soils to survive. Basically, when a um, bacterium sees a, a type of soil, they, um, they target and produce the specific enzymes to digest that soil. So they're very efficient. They don't wanna use, they wanna use only as much energy in order to be able to digest that soil. So they produce just enough enzymes in order to digest that and continue to replicate and, and produce more enzymes in order to digest the entire soil. Now, the interesting thing is this, these bacteria, and we, we've done a, a study, have shown to be viable for up to 21 days after initial application. What we did is in our lab, our chemists um, back, put bacteria down on a surface um, and then swabbed that surface, put it on, a, uh, put it on an agar plate and grew it for a period of three weeks. And you can see from the, from the pictures that after three weeks, we still have viable bacteria. And we stopped the test at three, we probably would have even got longer. So the point there is the continuous cleaning benefit after the initial, after the initial application, which we will go on and talk about in uh, several subsequent slides. Okay, so one person mentioned uh, enzymes when they mentioned the word probiotics. And that, that's interesting because the terms bacteria and enzymes really get thrown, thrown around um, simultaneously. And there is definitely a difference. Again, I want to really want to reinforce this. So we're gonna, we're, we're gonna hammer this home. The bacteria produce enzymes to target different soils. They continue to produce enzymes until there's no more food sources. And enzymes themselves can be very effective. We have enzymes in our laundry products and some of our carpet products, and um, they continue to be uh, generated. They, then the only problem is once they're used up, they're gone. They don't, there's no more. The, the enzymes are a finite resource, whereas the, the bacteria, the enzyme producing bacteria will continue to produce enzymes until that food source is gone. So there's no residual benefit from using straight enzymes. We want the efficient bacteria in order to, pro in order to uh, produce the enzymes to digest the specific soils completely. Okay, so the enzymes, what are the different types of enzymes that, uh, that bacteria produce? And we're gonna talk specifically about the, um, the enzymes, uh, the, the bacteria in our products. So cellulase, <clears throat> excuse me, this breaks down cellulosic material. Uh, such as paper, lipase, it uh, breaks down fat molecules. So when, you, when you're in a kitchen and you have heavy fat, fatty soils, um, lipase is a good one uh, to break down those soils. Amylase, which breaks down starch molecules found in vegetables, beans, and grains. A lot of starch molecules really cause um, clogs in, uh, in drains and kitchens. They're, uh, they, they, they tend to uh, build up there and um, and cause problems in the uh, in the drain lines. 
uh, protease. These are protein-based soils like beef and chicken. And then the last one, which again, we're gonna show you a whole bunch of uses for probiotics later. And I, there's actually uricase enzyme, which breaks down uric acid. And those who you've been in the cleaning industry know uric acid really is the primary cause of scale, which leads to really bad odors around urinals and toilets. So, and here we're gonna show you one more video. And this really explains the mechanism for how probiotics work compared to traditional cleaners. We have one last, one last poll question for you. The byproducts of bacterial digestion are carbon dioxide and nitrogen. Little, little science question for you. Okay, 41, I think we're good here. Okay, so we, uh, to show you the results, the answer was false. We had 68% said true and 32% said false. And another little trick question for you. Um, actually, the by byproducts of bacterial digestion are carbon dioxide and oxygen. So not, not nitrogen. <laughs> so we uh, had a little curveball there, but the important point is when we talk about the benefits of probiotic cleaning, one of them is the sustainable aspect. So um, there's bio, biodegradable chemicals and the zero waste end products, carbon dioxide and water. There's nothing else um, that uh, that is produced with that with that process. So it's a it's a it's a renewable resource. Um, it doesn't um, uh, tax the um, the environment. And, uh, and really is a much friendlier, sustainable approach to cleaning. Um, <clears throat> the other benefits are all these formulas that we're going to talk that, 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 that we have in the probiotic line are pH neutral. Um, accidental contact won't, won't harm the user. Um, the downstream benefits. So after you finish cleaning um, and, you know, and, it, and it goes down the drain, not only is it it's, it's also gonna take care of the um, fat soils and greases and soils um, in the drain. As long as it's a food source, those bacteria are gonna to continue to produce enzymes and digest what's in there. So we're gonna um, help the overall municipal system by, by, um, by putting these down the drain when we're done cleaning. It completely eliminates malodor. So again, if you think of that continuous cleaning app, uh, application, it's gonna to continue to work as long as a food source, those food sources are, are, are the cause of odors. So by taking care of the food source, we're also gonna take care of the odors. And they are extremely effective on a whole bunch of different surfaces. You can use them on, on hard and soft surfaces like carpet. And as we continue to drive home, they produce the continuous cleaning. So long after you're done cleaning, cleaning the area, it, the bacteria will be um, will be left behind producing those enzymes to take care of the um, the food source that's in that uh, that's in that location. So a bunch of different benefits, both from a sustainable standpoint to cleaning benefits and um, and and safety as well. All right. So now we're going to do a little dive into applications. Okay. So the the different applications we're going to talk about. Um, 
First in, is drains. And when we talk about drains, this is usually probably where you think of the probiotics. As we mentioned um, we've had a product, um, we've had several products in, in, in our line, but drains is probably the biggest application. And what are the probiotics going to do in the drain line? Well, the drain line is a perfect a perfect area for, for bacteria because there is um, there's, there's moisture, there's a constant food source. You're, 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 uh, you're um, putting food down the drain all the time and it's going to um, digest the fat, oils and greases and prevent them from building up in the drain line. But hence, it's gonna reduce the odors. And um, as an added benefit, the fruit flies that, that tend to reside around drains because there's, um, because there's a bunch of food there, by taking care of the food source, it's gonna mitigate fruit flies as well. Now, important point to, to, to make is these are drain, the, the probiotics are drain maintainers. They're not drain openers. So if you have an existing clog, you really got to hit it with a chemical treatment and then use the um, probiotic drain cleaner, such as, such as our drain and grease trap treatment to maintain the drain line. And by doing that, you will prevent having to use that drain opener um, on, a re on a reoccurring basis. Another area is grease traps. Grease traps are, are basically collections of, uh, it's a collection of grease. And so when that grease gets, um, goes out of the restaurant, they, it, it ends up in the grease trap and the grease, and the grease is separated and allows water to flow downstream. <clears throat> now, um, one important point is using the bacteria, using the probiotics in this application is going to take care of the, of the greases. Another, and as that grease is dissolved, it does, it, it does not um, re-solidify downstream. It's completely dissolved. Or some other treatments, they may it actually may re-solidify down, down, downstream. So what that's going to do is ba basically these restaurants have to pump out uh, grease, grease traps on a regular basis. By using the uh, draining and using a probiotic product like drain trap treatment, it is going to reduce the amount of pump outs, saving that restaurant significant amount amounts of uh, amounts of money but for, um, for taking care of those pump outs. So meaning if they pump out every, every once a month, they may be able to reduce that to um, every two months or every three months, depending if on the, on the um, application and how it's applied and the amount of, great, amount of grease going to that grease trap. Next area is garbage disposals. Uh, garbage disposals, if you've kind of uh, looked inside there, there's a lot of areas for, for um, food to hide um, and you know, there's little there's sharp areas and trying to main, take care of that is, is, uh, can be a pain. So what we have a product there that it's a powder, it's throw, it's a, you throw the packet into the, um, garbage disposal, foams up. So it takes care of all that sidewall as well as the gasket. And if you've ever, um, seen one of those gaskets after several uses, pretty nasty, pretty, and it has terrible odors as well. So we're going to maintain that garbage disposal so it never gets that buildup and that uh, and the the issues as far as um, that gasket and other areas within the garbage disposal. Uh, dumpsters are a perfect application for for um, probiotics, as um, we've mentioned. A lot of food and other materials can end up in a dumpster, and they're virtually they're hardly ever cleaned. Um, so the perfect application is after the dumpster is and the trash is removed, take the um, our dumpster treatment product, spray it down. It has a high, it's a high foaming product, so it can stick to those vertical surfaces that you'll find in a dumpster, and it'll take care of the soils as well as again eliminate the odors. Um, loading docks. We actually have a product that targets petroleum soils, so uh, produces enzymes that digest petroleum soils. That's our grease solve. And in that area it tends to um, get different um, uh, different greases from uh, forklift oils or other transmission fluids. And we have uh, the product Resolve will take care of those greasy films and um, prevent and basically create a much safer environment. They're not going to have the slip and falls with that with that oil um, with that oil there. So, that's, uh, we're going to continue on to applications on the next slide. Beverage tower trays. So beverage tower trays are areas where um, 
drinking fountains. And if you ever notice, when the, sometimes you look in, in the bottom of a drinking fountain, they develop kind of this kind of hard material, which they call sugar snakes. And by using a little puck that, that, that we developed and putting it inside that uh, drain, it's going to prevent that formation of sh uh, sugar snakes, therefore eliminate odors, keep the uh, drinking fountain working properly, um, soda fountain, I should say, from working properly, and uh, mitigate fruit flies again. Again, fruit flies don't have a food source, they don't hang around. Um, floors, an area in the kitchen, if you've um, ever gone into a poorly maintained kitchen, it's going to be really slippery back there and be a major cause of slip and falls. So we have a no rinse floor cleaner product um, that, uh, that, that we have that gets into the tile and grout areas that porous surfaces to take care of the fats, oils and greases and will end up with um, brighter grout lines as well as uh, safer, safer floors overall. And tile and grout, kind of the same situation. Um, get it really another porous surface where, where dirt tends to hide and by using the probiotics, we can clean below that surface. So it'll continue to clean and digest soils as long as uh, there is that, as long as it remains behind there. And then urinals, we mentioned um, uric acid issue, um, major cause. And so spraying around the, around the urinals is gonna take care of that uric acid and uh, create a much, um, much cleaner and a less uh, odor, less nasty odors within that restroom. So these are just a few of the different applications that we have. We have a whole family of products in both solid, liquid, and powder form for all the different applications we talked about, as well as a few more. So here's some uh, areas where you can gather some more information. You can go to our website. You can see the website, click on that link. Um, Beco.com slash solutions slash probiotic solutions. And so here we're going to learn about different products and applications. There's three e-learning courses that you can take um, to become, a, and one specifically for kitchen, kind of an intro course. And then we have a specific selling uh, e-learning course as well for how to sell probiotics. You can learn more about the science and some of the um, tests. I mentioned one test, but our lab did a whole series of tests to prove out the technology and find the right products for the right application. And then we have, uh, we have a ton of different resources from brochures, sell sheets, calculators, FAQs, and a glossary of terms. So um, if you go that, if you go there, learn um, all about that, read the materials, look at the glossary, you will become an expert, guarantee it. So that is our um, presentation and hope you enjoyed that. And I think we have some time for some questions. Yeah. So uh, if you have any questions, please go hit uh, the Q&A icon, enter your question, and we'll get to your questions. In addition to all the resources that we currently have online in April of next year, we will be uh, holding a probiotics uh, Betco U course here in uh, Bowling Green. We're putting the curriculum together uh, now. So that'll be specific uh, specifically around probiotics. So that'll be in April of next year. So stay tuned for that. Okay, we have the first question here for Mr. Barry. Professor Barry is, can I use it for grout in a bathroom? Absolutely. So the grout is a perfect application because it is a porous surface. And kind of alluding to the video, when you clean the surface of the grout, it may look clean, but you come back a few days later and that material has kind of um, uh, wicked back and you and also you probably would st still have those odors from what's emanating from below the surface. So by using a probiotic product, you are getting below the surface to take care of those soils, um, to care of those unseen soils. Great. And Barry, can you tell us a little bit about uh, the, the newest happenings with PUSH? Yeah, good question. So there's three new scents for, uh, for, for Push. Um, we have our classic mint, which I'm sure several of you are familiar with. And then we have a couple of different scents. We have kind of a, a lighter, more um, uh, scent, more for applications around um, on carpet and other areas for, um, and that's our lemon and sage. 
And we also have a new mango scent, which has been proven quite popular. Um, we brought it to the ISSA show, and that by far was a uh, was a big winner. So I'd encourage you to uh, to try out all the scents, as they are all a little different, and each have um, you know, and just like uh, you know, this uh, Baskin Robbins is thirty one different flavors. Everyone has their own preference. So um, encourage you to check that out. Okay, another question, Barry is. If we have a facility that's using our STG process, our stone, stone tile and grout uh, pro program, like in a bathroom, when and how will they use the probiotics and will they work? Yeah, good question. So the STG consists of uh, two applications, the, um, the cleaner and the um, sealer. Um, and they... The products, again, being neutral, it won't hurt uh, using the probiotics in conjunction with the, with the STG cleaner. Uh, again, it is going to um, be able to still get into that, into that grout line, into those grout surfaces in order to di digest the product. So the idea would be they could use them in, in, in conjunction. If you're using the stone, the STG cleaner every day, Maybe once a week, use the uh, probiotics to take care of the um, material beneath the surface, control odors. And so that, that, that's kind of what I'd say. Use kind of the SDG cleaner on a regular basis um, and then use the probiotics maybe once a week to take care of the stuff below the surface and control the odors. All right. Another question. Besides push, what are some of our most popular probiotic sellers? Great question. So we have our no rinse floor cleaner, which continues to gain in, in popularity, perfect product for kitchens to keep, uh, to keep those grout lines uh, clean and uh, create a much safer environment. Um, the Grease Solve, a lot of, a lot of uh, municipalities are looking for products that, um, a lot of facilities are looking for products that they don't have to treat the waste. Um, going, going down, it's, it's very expensive and can, um, is an extra step. So the product being neutral, don't have to treat the waste, and actually as it goes in the waste stream, has that added benefit. So that's an excellent product. Um, the drain and trap treatment. So the drain and trap treatment has a higher level, has a higher number of bacteria, has a special nutrient package in order to uh, work faster, and is, and is specifically targeted for drain and traps. Um, so those are three of our additional products that I, that I would encourage everybody to look at, as well as some of the newer um, powders and, um, uh, and solid products that we have and uh, that, uh, that we mentioned, including the um, grease and trap blocks. So for, drain, for, uh, for um, drains and grease traps and the neem drain, drain treatment, which is specifically designed for the beverage tower. Barry, you mentioned a couple times a no-rinse floor cleaner. A question here is, does it dry as rapidly as a product like pH 7 and with no residue? Yeah, good question. Yeah, as soon as that is kind of, kind of the idea with the no-rinse and is um, it does dry similar to, to pH 7 Ultra. If it's mopped on, all you, and if it's mopped on, you're just going to take the excess that's on there and take it down the drain because that's going to take care of your drains as well. And you can mop that on. It does not leave a residue. So you want to make sure that some remains on the floor. So the, the process is to, is, is to mop that down, put the excess down the drain, allow it, to, allow it to dry. We don't want to wipe it up or rinse it or anything like that because we want those bacteria to remain behind to continue to digest those fat oils and greases. Okay, a couple more quick questions, Barry, and then we'll let everybody go on. What about using, uh, like you play in a restroom and you're using a quaternary ammonium a quat disinfectant? Yeah, that's a good question. So in general, quats are one of the things that, that can uh, harm the bacteria. So, I mean, can, uh, so quats, bleaches, generally you have to be in a pretty high concentration, but as kind of a um, best practice, you're, you're disinfecting every day just make sure you don't do it directly after the bacterial, the, 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 um, don't use the quads directly after the, um, the bad, the using the probiotics. So, um, go ahead and, and do your disinfection and then do your, um, your, your probiotics. As long as they're not done right after each other, it shouldn't be an issue. Okay. 
the essence of time, one more question, and that was regarding uh, success stories with the probiotics. And I'll relay one that comes to mind real quick, and that is uh, we're working with a grocery uh, supermarket chain that has hundreds of, uh, of grocery stores, and we put in our uh, drain trap, our drain uh, cleaner, and in the in the store, so that way they would eliminate the pumping of the grease traps, the um, um, plugging of grease in, into the different uh, lines and that. And we were able to save them over $8,000 per year of what they had been spending per year previous to that. So with, with a grocery store, $8,000 for that store per year by using the drain and trap cleaner. So that's a great uh, testimonial there. So with that, we'll move on. We appreciate your uh, questions today. Obviously, you can get a hold of uh, Barry or your regional manager for additional questions. Again, this is the first installment. We'll have another installment right after the first of the year that's gonna focus on uh, food service. And uh, stay tuned for uh, your e-blast and uh, LinkedIn for, for that announcement and get signed up and get with your regional manager. Uh, they've gone through, uh, going through extensive training as well. We have introduced uh, new products. We have um, a, a program for distributors to bring the products into stock and target accounts to go out and help you uh, sell them at, uh, at end customers. So thank you very much for your time and attention today and everybody have a great Veterans Day.